Salaga South is located in the savannah region of Ghana and borders the Bimbela, Bandai, Salaga North and Pru East constituencies. The constituency is the most cosmopolitan area of the region. Some notable ethnic groups in the constituency are Gunja, Kunkumba, Hausa, Chumburu and Nauris. The people of Salaga South engage largely in farming, fishing and trading. It is one of the constituencies in the region with notable tourist sites, playing home to the slave wells and market. Major communities in the constituency are Quimbi, Kalandi, Makango, Aburmase, Kafaba, Kawuni, and Salaga. Though the National Democratic Congress has dominated the constituency in presidential elections since 1992, the story is different with parliamentary contests. Previously known as the Salaga constituency, Brahma Baba held the seat for the NDC from 1992 to 2000 when Al Haji Boniface Abubakar Sadiq annexed it as an independent candidate. He won again in 2000, this time as a candidate of the New Patriotic Party, making it the first time the party had won the seat. With the influence of John Mahama as the NDC running mate in 2008, the party's candidate, Al Haji Ibrahim Abubakar Day, won back the seat for the party. In 2012, the Salaga North constituency was carved out. Then the name changed from Salaga constituency to Salaga South. Again, the NDC's Ibrahim Day retained the seat. They lost narrowly to the MPP's Salifu Adam Brahma in 2016 by less than 60 votes. This year, 51,000 plus voters will determine who represents Salaga South in the next parliament. The Savannah Regional Minister, Salifu Brahma Adam, must fight off competition from Hadja Zuera Ibrahima. Kasim Rabiu is the NDC constituency treasurer. He explains why their party holds the upper hand. The tendency of uh, Ajia and then Jamama win the, the seats or winning the elections in Salga South is very, very high. And why am I saying so? It was when you look at the work of Jamama, the first four years that he did, the projects that he executed here, they are, they are, it's, it's indispensable. And, and, and when you look at even a clear example to the Kwembi Health Assent Training School, the massive infrastructure there, then the major concern of the people of this constituency is the Salaga uh, Tamali Road. And prior to his, uh, 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 the, the last part of his governance, he awarded a contract for the road to be constructed. And then the MPP came and then abrogated the contract. And that has made the people very, very angry. The people are angry because of that. So the people are now promising that they are going to vote, vote your mama back to come and continue the road because the MPP have abandoned the road, which your mama has awarded to Ibrahim Mama previously. And concerning uh, Adi Azuera, I think this is the first time that we are having a woman to contest, uh, to contest these seats in this constituency. And the women groups, the women, and then the, the ladies, even men, have now realized that it is time for us to bring a woman. Traditionally, it's NDC that has been winning since 92. If you look at the gap between the NDC and the uh, MPP, it's always what? We have been beating them. So it is not a new thing for us. So with the work that Ajia is doing, with the number of boreholes she has constructed, the social support she has given to women and men, and if you look at the enthusiasm within the constituency upon her coming, clearly she's going to win the seat, the, the, the seat inshallah. But Adam Mohammed, the MPP constituency youth organizer, says Uncle Sally, as the MP is affectionately called by constituents, will retain the seat. He told City News the MP has done enough to win the heart of voters. 
The people of Yakubupi said they wanted clinic, we are delivering clinic. The people of Kwani said they wanted a community centre, we are delivering community centre. The people of Bungpa, for almost a decade, never had a classroom block. We have delivered a classroom block. The people of Abumasi, for centuries, never saw a network tower. We are giving them a network tower and then we are giving them light. The people of CCP, if you take from Mabungi, Sapurso, Nakwae, Pungpo, they have not seen light through the hard work and lobby of the minister. By elections, we are going to power them. The people of the Gambia were deceived to the extent that polls that were not meant for them was brought into the community just to deceive them to vote. And they voted and from that time up to now, they have not gotten light. And by the good works of this honorable MP, they are also going to get light. The people of Nikata said they wanted light, we have given them light. The people of Kumabui said they wanted light, we have delivered light. The people of Abele Kura, they said they wanted light, we have given them light. The people of Makangu said they wanted clinic, we have given them clinic. And the people of Kombu said they wanted school, we have given them school. I'm only taking you through this, that the kind of leadership we are giving to our people is a priority-based leadership, based on their own interests and choices. It is not only Sally Fubraima and Haji Azuera that are in the contest. They must also be the LPG's Mohamed Tanko Jara if they want to be in the next parliament. People of Salaga are fed up with this mass craze. If I say mass craze, I mean like uh, the kind of lies they air into our ears anytime they come for their campaigns and other things. The people are fed up. And so, just like I said earlier, there is no a, an indigenous of Salaga who have ever contested for this uh, position. They always come from somewhere and then they take part. And there is a saying in my local dialect that he who owns a room knows where the leakages is or where the leakages are. And so I'm an indigenous of Salaga, and this is a reason why uh, I should be given the chance. There are also those who might not vote at all. Interestingly, there is a youth group that are campaigning for a no street, no vote in the constituency. They have held demonstrations, printed flyers and t-shirts to aid their campaign. The following is a discussion we had with Ahmed Fuseni and some of their leaders. Every politician who will come to our constituency to campaign is just coming with two things. I will fix your road and bring you water. Yeah. I think since 1992. Until but until days. date, we don't have those things. Never. And we don't know who among them will come and bring those things to us. So to whoever think he can do that, we should do that so that we give our, the person the next mandate yeah. to go back to parliament. Yeah. Be it NDC or MP, because we are neutral. We don't have any political part, uh, color. Yeah. We are just the youth of Salaga pushing the agenda, no state, no yeah. Yeah. Though there is a good number of constituents here who say they will not be showing up on voting day to vote, there must still be enough time for either parties to woo them to their side. From the Salaga slave market, I am Richard Fogo, reporting for City News.